Cat, it's Maximus here, this time with a quick review of the Radio Shack 22-508B, uh, 19 amp, 13.8 volt uh, electronics testing power supply. This was a little bit pricey at Radio Shack, I think it was around 50 bucks, but it was kind of handy because there were very few local places where you could find really uh, pretty high output 12 volt, or this is 13.8 volt, but power supplies that you could use to test automotive components, whether it's headlight assemblies or lighting assemblies, uh, you know, power window regulators, uh, just testing the function of stereo equipment, a variety of things, because you often need lots of amps to try to test those, uh, those types of uh, components, and it's always kind of difficult to find a real high output, uh, you know, 12 volt range power supply that can take those kind of loads. This is 250 watts maximum, and even though it is a bit noisier versus a transformer-based linear power supply, it actually works pretty well, particularly because it can output uh, 250 watts. It does have illuminated power switch and some standard banana terminals. Uh, it does have a nice metal case, a couple vents on each side, which I like because it has a through fan. So the fan draws in through these vents here and then pulls it out through the back, and that is a load-sensing fan. So when it's sitting here and not running anything, the fan doesn't uh, turn on. It is not actually heat-sensitive, I, I don't believe, because it kind of functions weird, because as soon as you put a high load on it, maybe more than 5 amps, uh, the fan automatically just turns on. But nonetheless, it works, and I think that's a nice touch. It does have a cooling fan, but it doesn't run all the time, so it's not just annoying you, as well as wearing the fan out quicker. I did do one upgrade. I did upgrade the capacitor to the, out, the output capacitance, just so it have a little bit of extra oomph, particularly when you're uh, testing electric motors. And it's surprising that, yes, very lots of small electric motors, as soon as you turn them on, they have a surge current, does it? builds the magnetic field and the motor windings, and that can be 10 times uh, the normal operating current. So you really need something that has a lot of overhead, and I put in the extra capacitance to just kind of deal with those surge uh, issues. What was also, What is also nice about this power supply is that it's uh, overload protected. So it knows when it's uh, dead short or it's just too low a resistance and it's going to drive way more than 19 amps, and it will shut itself off, and all you have to do is unplug or disconnect the load for a second, and it'll automatically reset itself and then you can try again which makes it really convenient rather than having to reset the power supply and so I always really like this unit now one thing I kind of like to do is I've been recently experimenting with is taking like 12 volt or 14 volt tools let me zoom out a little bit I have this old kind of no-name duro fix it was a 14.4 volt impact driver that a special adapter it actually has a half inch drive anvil on there and then it had an adapter to make it go to quarter inch and what I kind of found handy is, you know, this thing was like $2. And I thought, well, I could just wire it up manually here and kind of use this power supply to drive this. And it actually has just enough power. Sometimes the power supply will cut out, but most times it runs this tool just fine. What's kind of nice about this in this situation, uh, a corded style battery operated tool, is it makes it very compact. It still has a decent amount of power. And then for me, with the half inch, it's kind of handy just to put on a socket and run down lug nuts and things like that without actually having to worry about over-torquing them too much. And it's a small device. And, of course, it's for budget consciousness. You know, this thing was only $2 used without any battery or anything. And so with the power supply that I use to experiment with stuff, uh, you know, high output 12-volt power supply or 13.8 volt in this situation, I'm able to use this driver uh, and save quite a bit of money. Here, I'll connect it real fast. And here we are. So I have a little power supply in this little unit. And since this runs on, this is a DC power supply. This works just like it does off a battery, and it works pretty nice. What's kind of interesting about this little drill fix, since it has a square anvil on it, it's actually tuned down more reverse torque. You can hear it. So anyway, that's one of the neat things that you can use these little power supplies for. Here, I'm going to spend just a second and pull off the cover just so you can see inside. Here we go, I got all the screws out. Let's just pop this cover up. Whoop, let me make sure it's actually unplugged first. Always make sure electronics are unplugged before you take a look inside them. Anyway, there's our metal cover. It does have an all metal case. Actually, I believe this is an aluminum case. It's just a little bit too light to be a normal, uh, to be a steel body. And this was what was actually kind of surprising why I opened this little guy up. Is it does have a pretty thin fan, but it's a decent one. And it's a standard, whatever that is, a 
I don't think that's 60, that's a 50 millimeter computer fan, so that can always be replaced. And I actually thought it was pretty well built. They have plenty of elastic or, you know, the glue type material over a variety of components, including the big capacitors, just to help prevent them fatigue. Uh, even it's a single rail switching power supply, but it's actually pretty beefy. As you can see, there's actually large heat sinks, which I thought was pretty uh, nice. And the air comes in through this, the sides, and then gets pulled out through the fan. What's kind of interesting is this heat sink is pointing the right direction. So the air will come in, go through the fins on this one. It's kind of, it's backwards. I thought it should be flipped around, but uh, apparently it's not. Although it does have smaller components mounted to it, as you can see there, versus like these big output circuits, like the bridge rectifier and whatever that uh, the mo the big switching MOSFET is hooked up to this one. We have some large chokes and capacitance, so it actually has a surprising amount of uh, uh, input or line filtering. So I was pleased to see that, and we can see here lots of actually quite large capacitors. These are uh, the the high voltage side capacitors and they are 200 volt at 330 microfarads but there's four of them so it's actually pretty surprising and then these are the output capacitors this is the what would be known as the low voltage side over here this is the input and then this is the high voltage and switching side there's the switching power supply how pitch switching power supplies are able to be so small is that they actually are using high frequency to essentially it the transformers are very small transformer size goes down smaller as the frequency goes up and so actually the high voltage is switched on and off at a particular rate where the transformer steps it down and then it ends up averaging out or smoothing out to being in this case 13.8 volts but they are noisy you know this will have five to ten times as much noise or actually could even be a hundred times this will have several hundred millivolts of noise versus what would be considered a linear or scientific grade power supply but overall it's built pretty darn well i really appreciate that they just didn't use one thin wire but they actually have four heavy duty wires from the main outputs to the output terminals and i thought you know that was pretty intelligent too so all you can see here is that i just took another couple of wires and, and put on connectors and connect them directly to the outputs, you know, not anywhere else, but as close to where the load's going to be as possible. And it put in a pretty large, you know, like a 16 volt or a 20, I think this is a 25 volt, you know, something like a 12,000 or 10,000 microfarad capacitor. And then find a, found a nice little place to cinch it. And I even, you know, did the nice little shrink tubing around the wires there and shrink tubing around the whole capacitor itself, just in case there was any issues. But that was just a kind of the upgrade. So I saw how robust the power supply was, and it was pretty decent inside. So I figured out it had just enough space, and I had some extra components. And there'll be more videos I do in the future when I do these kinds of upgrades to equipment, just for the fun of it. Uh, but it's always kind of nice to be able to do an upgrade where you have something that's pretty decent like this, and then you can just really uh, make it extra useful and be able to handle those kind of motor loads, which is one of the big reasons I use this, is the motors and testing, you know, like car stereo equipment, maybe, you know, various other things. You know, 12 volt coolers and that kind of thing, it's kind of nice to have a power supply that you can plug in and test them with. Car inverter systems, those types of things. So I've always been real satisfied with this. Anyway, I'll go and end the review and look inside there. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.